This is June James reading chapter 7 of Timberland's new book, by the way. And the chapter is called All Day I Dream About Beats. My bedroom was, was beginning to look like a bona fide studio, which was fitting because all I did day and night was dream about making music. There was wires snaking everywhere and machines. Most of them bought secondhand stacked around my room. More often, more often, as soon as school was out, people would drop by to listen to make beats, make tapes for parties. One afternoon, Pharrell swung through. Well, when did you get this? He said, running his fingers along my new ASR 10. Dang, what was this throwback? That's my baby, I, I said with a smile. We're about to get it on for real. I can start making some serious beats now. That's great. You've got to let me check this out for us, said, taking in the sleek console, the ASR 10, purchased courtesy of my Liberty Mutual Checks was the finest piece of recording equipment any of us own. That's dope. That's dope. Now, what did you think about what you just read? Can you relate to what he said? Yeah, I can definitely relate to this because I can, it's just dope that Pharrell's like a peer of his or just like, like how like he's just like, Pharrell's a legend himself, Tim is definitely a legend, but Pharrell's a legend himself too when I, when I grew up on because I'm a different generation, but like, it's just crazy how they just like, hella stoked over this equipment they get, it just feels like how me and my people would be. You know, when we get our stuff and we you know, get our new equipment, just like even with my peers who, or my partners who produce partners who produce platinum hits, it's just crazy how they just coincide and just correlate. That's dope to me. Now, okay, he mentioned Pharrell. So obviously him and Tim uh, Timberland and Pharrell were pretty close early on in Timberland's career. Um, when you were coming up as a producer, were you the loner type working by yourself or did you have other producers come work with you and kick it with you or how did that work? Um... When I first started, I was by myself. The older I've gotten, I've had a team now. So I want to say when I first started, yeah, I was I was a loner. But the more I got into it, I started attracting people. People started coming to me, and it just I just developed a team, just naturally off chemistry. So yeah, I started off as a loner, but now I'm not a loner no more. I've got a whole team now. Okay. Tell. <laughs> okay. And uh, what else was I gonna say? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, how how would you compare your first studio? Um, he was talking about his mother's basement and stuff like that. How Ooh, about yourself? My first ever studio was in my college dorm in Greystone, TSU, Texas Southern Apartments. And I literally had like a, like a what was it, USB mic. I didn't even have Pro Tools. I had, what we had? Then we had an Endo, a Cubase. And my beast was trash. So I didn't have no VSTs or plugins. I had nothing but sound fonts. Whoa. We didn't even have a Mac. We had like a, a old desktop HP with a fat butt on it. It was that bad. But yeah, I mean, now we got hella stuff. We got everything you need now. So came a long way. Consistency pays off. Hard work pay off. I look back at that stuff and laugh, but it keep me humble too. I got, I still got the same mic, locked up in my room. <laughs> Just keep, you know, keep me humble. Keep me reminded, you know, you know. Came a long way. Still got a long way to go too.